Greetings, everybody. This is Sabin Dimitrov, a.k.a. Adinsvo the Octowolf, and it is a pleasure to have you guys here for this next video. So, I am very happy to report that we were able to accomplish something that will be very big for us. So, what we're going to do is, first of all, going to go ahead and do this, and we're going to go ahead and do this. And then, we're going to go over here to the Arc Modification. Just so you guys know, they actually changed uh, a lot of, of, of the stuff that was required. This was originally supposed to be level 50, but they moved all that down to level 20. And now, we can go ahead and do this. Now, level 20 has been unlocked. And that is a huge help for us. So yeah, uh, so what we just did is that we increased the uh, commander uh, base leadership by 300. It's not much, but it's something. Wait, is that, is that 300 percent? No, just 300. Okay, and that's not much, but that's something. And then increase commander skill training speed by 30 percent. That was actually pretty good because. Uh, Increase commander skill training speed. Oh, okay, so I think that's just uh, their, their uh, abilities. So that's not going to be very very useful to us. But we're going to increase airship commander XP gained. And maybe if we do that, that's 30%. And then this is what we are looking for. Increase airship commander marching speed by 6%. Now that's 30%. So now we're going to be so much faster on the battlefield. And then increase airship commander leadership by 40. And now it's maxed out. Well, almost maxed out. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until this is level 30 to really get, to really get some more of these set up. But, you know, we have now... Now have a lot more stuff for our, uh, you know, for our airships. You know, all the airship stuff, go away, has actually been, uh, maxed. Oh. Well, most of the airship stuff has been maxed. Now, the airship training speed and training cost... We're going to have to work on that because this needs to be level 22 and that's not even a lot for us yet. But as you guys can see, we were, were, a, were able to get some really good stuff for our airships. Now, it's going to take us a while to get um, all of these because it's like level 43 and all that crazy stuff. So uh, what we're going to do is that we're, we're going to try to blitzkrieg our way through the arc modification stuff. But uh, I want to show you guys now what happens when I send an airship commander to help out um, my friend. Last time it was 17 seconds. Now it is uh, 14 seconds. So it doesn't seem like much, but over like a long, you know, a long uh, time away, you know, um... Uh, sorry. Uh, when when you're when you're attacking targets from from a longer way, that you know that can be like you know thirty minutes or you know whatever that you know. So if I attack, I right, hold on now. Uh, here, if we, if we go ahead and attack this, this shows fourteen minutes, and and before that. So that's oh shoot whoops I didn't mean to do that darn it okay sorry g give me a second guys I will show you uh, give me a second bookmark that so twelve thirty three if we switch to a different one then we go back to here sixteen thirty 
33. So, yeah. Uh, you can see how much of a difference that makes. So having that, that extra 30%, you know, for our marching speed is huge. And the Dominion is perfect for my, for my Orochi. Because that allows, well, all my, uh, all my, uh, Airship commanders, and like I said, you know, uh, now our our base leadership has increased even more. And when when that's the case, guys, I will show you this. So two one two four, sorry, two four two one. So yeah, so two four two one. Two four two two. You see that 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 increased. So. Just because of that, our airships now have just a tiny bit more leadership. So, I mean, that is, that's actually pretty big. So, uh, if you ask me, you know, that's, it's pretty darn, pretty darn cool if you ask me. And then for Vega, uh, let's say 219. Twenty. See how, how how that works, guys. Every little bit of airships and leadership that, that we can squeeze in, into our commanders because of the arc modification, you know, that will help our commanders be even stronger. And yeah, so now uh, Orochi is boasting a massive two million one hundred eighty thousand sixty eight. So that's pretty darn good, if you ask me. Ow. So uh yeah, um as we keep um upgrading more of our more of our stuff for our airships and I'll show you. We want to get the training speed leveled up and we want to get the training cost leveled up. See? Training speed again. Oh, advanced airship. Okay, I got you. And train cost. And then what we're going to do here, guys, is uh, work on our airship stuff even more. But this is like level 26 and other things away. Airship health points, airship defense, and uh, airship attack. And then airship critical, airship accuracy, and airship uh, dodge. So pretty much what we are going to, going to be doing, guys, is that we're going to be trying to working on uh, getting our stuff. Uh, leveled up as quickly as possible. Because uh, this one here is going to cost an insane amount of uh, stuff to get, you know, uh, them leveled up, which is exceptionally frustrating. So this is going to take us a while, but if we focus most of our uh, of our resources into getting those crystals, even if we can't spend money, uh, which you most which we can't, well, what we can do is that we can uh, participate in events like these and slowly save up the 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 aether coins. And uh, as this event progresses, we can slowly get more. Uh, uh, limited time, limited time chests with these quantum crystals. So every time uh, we uh, we work on those quantum crystals, and every time we uh, we do an event like quantum crystals uh, for our daily missions, we will get more of those. And every time we uh, we get these uh, points for the individual events, we will get quantum crystals. So. You know, you can actually start to slowly level yourself up, little by little, making your airships and your commanders much more powerful. And what, what we are trying to do is we're trying to focus solely on the airships, because that will, 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 will make them stronger, better, and faster. And uh, I know some people say that I should try to have, have an attack commander, but I am better at defending for right now just because you know the attack commander can't really do much so i'm very tempted 
to get some more work done on uh, done on Rogers because that will allow him to have some more stuff because uh he already has one Aldebaran. And uh, if you see, uh, Rogers, you know, has his own stuff right here. But I want to try to try to work on him some more. And uh, maybe get like another, uh, try to get, you know, his, uh, all of his equipment to like level, level 40. Um, and then uh, he will be our secondary defense commander. Until we get Orochi's equipment to level 50 or at least all level 45s, we're not going to be, 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 be able to do much for anything else on that. But as you can see, we have three level 45s on Orochi, uh, one 42 and 141. So that's really, really good. Rogers is going to be, be kind of our, you know, supplementary commander because... You know, he may not be as strong, but, you know, if we can, you know, outfit him with some, with some stronger soldiers, he's going to be a lot better. By the way, uh, I also wanted to show you guys, in our last individual event, uh, which was assembling armies, you can uh, train uh, soldiers and get points. We were rank 31, which means we trained a lot of soldiers. And as you guys can see, there's not, I mean, there's some V12s. But not very many. And just as a reminder, guys, I'm going to show you what V12 is. Uh, that means uh, from V11 for years to V12, you can see it's a massive difference on like a lot of our stuff that is available. You see how I'm moving back and forth between 11 and 12? Take a look at those numbers and see what you see as a difference. Every little bit of these is a massive change. Especially when you start getting on big scales. Like the stuff that we are working on for for our commanders. Because I remember when we first started the game we had this. Which was just puny, puny, sad little things. And now we are getting these beautiful things. Which is... A lot better. It's still menial, but every little bit of that helps. So, um, you want to, if you're looking to like try to get, you know, your, to get like a specific type of soldier group done, I would highly recommend that you figure out what commander type you want to do and stick with it. Um, because, uh, I, uh, I, like I said, I kind of made a little bit of a small, mistake uh what you call it uh adding into these and that's like a couple billion resources i could have used for other things and i should not have done that like i shouldn't e even have have worked on, on any of the uh walker stuff at all there so it's that's all just like dormant resources that could have been used for something else so then for this one i also should have done the same like these, you know, you couldn't help it because you had to unlock your other soldiers. So these are understandable. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, you, you, you want to make sure that you stay on one single soldier type as much as possible and just focus on that and get that leveled up as quickly as possible. And then uh, when you go into your arc modification thing, which they added a couple months ago... Uh, yeah, you, you want to see, uh, you want to look down the tech tree and see what kind of soldier stuff you're looking for and how to get those set up. For me, I wanted to get the get the, the strategy thing set up as quick as possible because that gave me my uh, my stuff for my airships. So, you know, you just kind of kind of want to see how things develop. This uh, development one is going to be a nightmare to get set up. And I'm it's going to be ugly. But yeah, so uh, as things develop, you know, you want to try to see where you want to go for your command for for your uh, stuff because you know, as you see 5 10 15 20 20 so at 1530 that's 30 points that you are saving yourself if you focus on one soldier type 
And that's this additional 30 points that you're saving to yourselves. Additional 30 points you're saving yourselves. Uh, and an additional 60 points you're saving yourselves. And then for this one, you know, for, you know, go, getting your commanders, 20 points. 20 points. And that's it. And then for this one, you know, you're saving yourself 30 points right there. And then... Yeah, so you're saving yourself a couple hundred points right there when you when you are focusing only on one commander, on one soldier type. So you really want to want to try to get yourself vi viable as quickly as you can in the game if you are a new player. So you know, don't build into other things if you can help it. If you really want other soldiers and you really want to get, you know. Uh, and you really want to try out other things, but not have to, you know, get tons of uh, research done to get those soldier types. What you can do is you wait for the event where you can get those box soldiers. And when, um, if you are new in the game and you ask your guildmates what box soldiers are, they are a soldier that you can get when you send reinforcements over to the to the fort. You want to try to use either rangers or uh yetis R rangers are the tier one um infantry yetis are tier one uh uh walkers and the reason why is because the more soldiers you cram into your uh into your um uh fort for that two hour period uh yeah, the, the more soldiers that you, that you do that, um, <coughs> oh, gee, what occurs? Uh, the, the the more uh, medals that you know, medals that you'll get that you can turn into. Uh, uh, it's either I think it's firecrackers or certain event things, but you can turn those in, and that will give you the chance to get tier twelve. Tier 10, Tier 11, and Tier 9 soldiers of different classes, if you so wish. Or you can use those soldiers to supplement your ranks, so that way you will have better uh, um, uh, uh, soldier numbers. But, you know, let's say that you have, a, have a, another commander that you can kind of cheese. So, for instance, here I'll show you. Uh, let's say you have Sister Wolf, like I do. Sister Wolf is pretty simple, and uh, you know, uh, and once you get her set up with all level forty equipment, and you you, uh, you can actually do a lot of damage with her because uh, well, you run steam cannon on her, and you can she can fight a lot of other commanders pretty effectively when they are doing defenses. So as long as she doesn't get wiped out, she will can be effective, and she can actually use uh uh time uh no void skaters, which are tier twelve, um. Uh, tier 12, um, uh, soldier thing. Uh, so here, I, 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 it'll make sense. I'll show you. So, uh, actually here. Better yet, let's go ahead and do this. No, no, uh, wrong one. Uh, boop, 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 my dear. Alright, so look. So, the Void Skater... And um, uh, and the t and the transcender and the origin all have a thing called terror space, and terror space allows them to be able to, uh, when they hit a target, depending on certain attributes of the soldier type. For instance, uh, or for the origin, it's depending on the health points that the soldier has. Uh, that is how much the yes, certain percentage of that damage is done to that, uh, to that soldier. And I'll show you. So. Man, this game is so... I mean, this phone is sluggy. Uh, no, go away, you old turd. Give me a second. We're switching. Up. Oh. Alright, we're back and we're running. So, this one's special event is called Terror Space. After hitting the current target, it inflicts additional damage on the target, equal to 20% of the initiator's current health points. And as you guys can see, I have an absolute... Bajonkers wonkers amount of uh, health points. So that is going to be an insane amount of health points done against the enemy team. 
And then on top of that, with all my commander gear and all the other attributes of that, that's going to be in um, in the in like low millions of health points. So that's a lot of uh, of uh, you know boost right there. And then the next com next uh, soldiers will have a thing called Ether Impact. Bloody farts! I hate this thing. Uh, after hitting the current target, receives a damage absorbing shield that absorbs damage equal to 50% of the damage dealt. And uh, you will notice that, th that there are similar attributes of that for uh, these new soldiers. Eh, farts. You know, so the, uh, the blue hunk... No, sorry, yeah. The Blue Hunk, the Great Sage, and the Ether de Gen, all three of those, um... <clears throat> all three of those, uh, have that ability on them. Now, it could be different attributes, considering, but it's still similar, uh, attributes. So, yeah, a lot... So, the Blue Hunk and the Great Sage and the Ether de Gen are usually all... Uh, kind of bluish hued soldiers and transcenders void skitters and the origins are kind of this like weird kind of greenish hue soldier kind of vibe to them and then you have the uh the dream eater the phantom and the mirage those are usually more yellowish kind of soldiers but uh yeah those ones have have really high uh defense uh, while the while the origins and the other soldiers kind of have like more health points and other attributes to them that allows them to do their ability. I think the Mirage is uh, I forget exactly what the skills on that one are. It's been a, it's been a while and I lost the pictures that tell you all six attributes, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty yeah they have their abilities. Then then you have the Cyan Shuttle, the Time Walker, and the Galaxy Guard. Those are the. Uh, Holy balls, this is a 22 minute video already. Okay, Galaxy Guard, Time Walker, and Cyan Shuttle, they all have the ability to kind of heal themselves. Cyan Shuttle is based off of dodge, so depending on the amount of dodge that you have, uh, either 20 to 30% and so forth, uh, you can uh, have more uh, more uh, effectiveness in healing your soldiers every time they are hit. And then you have the IC-1848, uh, the the contact contract keeper and the soul weaver and if I remember right, those bad boys have a fun skill that allows them to do this, which is soul resonance. Accuracy increases by two hundred percent. Claims sorry gains additional one hundred percent accuracy for each adjacent teammate. So. You know, if you have a, um, if you have an attack commander, but you know it's it's like a one shot bust commander. We, we, we call it the one slot bust because it's one big angry slot of soldiers. <laughs> then what you do is that you have you know five other very small soldiers, if you can, if I remember right, for each adjacent uh, teammate. So technically. Um, wait, no, sorry, I I'm being stupid. Okay, give me a second. Accuracy increases by 200%. Gains additional accuracy for each ad adjacent teammate. So, yeah, you get more accuracy as more t more teammates that you have. Well, soldier, call them soldiers. <laughs> but uh, usually when, when you have something like this with the IC-1848, you have better accuracy and more, uh, more, uh, attributes to that and that's kind of what i was trying to go for uh vega so 217350 yeah so um what i'm trying to do is unlock all six type of uh airships maybe possibly but um in in the meantime what i'm trying to do is uh, focus on fit, uh, finally maxing out all of my airship research until we get to that point but yeah um can i hit you probably don't have much in there but um yeah so um when you kind of do like a quick overview of like how the different attributes of this game works you can kind of start to see why it's very important to really try to see what your options are ask players how how the game 
functions work and uh, what what soldier type you feel that you would be best at. Now, when it's lower level soldiers, you know, it's easier to kind of figure out what you want to try to do. And you can go up to like tier three or tier four with the lower tier soldiers, just kind of get, you know, I, I accustomed to like the different kind of fields of soldiers and commanders that you can try to do. But when you start getting above tier five, you really kind of want to start figuring out what your permanent soldier is going to be. So because you don't want to, you know, try to develop all three types of soldiers at simultaneously, because that will just pretty much deadlock you for being behind the curb and never being able to catch up. So, uh, you know, I figured that out fairly early into uh, into into development. So, you know, it wasn't horrible, but this is still a couple billion resources, you know, that I could have probably used to, you know, for my other stuff. Now, actually, no, that's not a couple billion. Oh, gosh, wow, because this is a lot that's not thought. Sorry, guys, I assure you I'm a smart individual. At least a billion resources that could have probably been used for other things. Maybe. Um. No. She what occurs? It's, sorry, it's been years since I've looked, uh, since I've really kind of done the numbers on these. And there must have changes because these these used to be a bit bigger. I will admit. So yeah, I mean, if you just have have, have like have like extra resources and stuff just laying around, go ahead and try to develop these. But, you know, if you're really try, trying to build up your stuff, you know, use your passive resources to, to level these up. So that way you can kind of get these uh, up and running. Once you start getting to the, to the 60 millions, you kind of want to just let that, you know, die out there. Because, uh, yeah, I worked a lot of that on my... Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, freaking walkers and i could have used those resources for building the soldiers and getting other things taken care of so just try to optimize your resources your usage and you know wait for special events because uh if you get like you know proper uh, equipment for like sister wolf like this or you get proper equipment for an attack commander a lot like this or you get, you know, super heavy duty defense equipment for your uh, Orochi or Vega or other defense commanders. You know, once you get those set up, you can set yourself up pretty effectively pretty early in the game. If you know how to play your cards right. And then, you know, if you want like a supplementary commander that kind of just runs things, you know, regularly. That's perfectly fine too. But yeah, I mean, all all four of these commanders are fairly well equipped. So I five of these commanders. Two of them are, no, three of them are phenomenally equipped. This one's pretty darn well equipped, and this one's just kind of like a supplementary commander. So, yeah, if you can get, like, all five commanders eventually set up, ready to go, that's freaking awesome. Because here, I'll show you. If you go way over here to these guys over here, like Odad, or uh, Judge, or, you know, these guys, you will notice that they have like max tier equipment, max level uh um commanders, max leadership, uh max uh gem sets, all sorts of crazy crazy things um at their stuff. This guy has freaking 13,410 and I have like 3,241. No, sorry, 2,183. So, I mean, yeah. I, you know, you can get yourself fairly high in the ranks. Uh, you want to try to start, you know, the automatic register for this one about seven days uh, remaining. And, you know, so that's seven, that's 24. Okay, Google. 24 times seven. Okay, Google. 24 times 7. Bloody hell. Okay, Google. What is 24 times 7? So you want to get 100 and... 
168 of these strength certificates. And that will allow you to save up. Where in the angry farts are you? I want to find you so I can show you. Angry freaking butt poops. Angry poops. Big old poops. Small little poops. All the different kinds of poops. Yeah. Here we are. Strength, strength certificates. They they look like this. So you know you so uh, you get about a hundred and fifty of these each month as you uh, do different you know uh, events and different this and different that and blah 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 blah. Actually, no, not one hundred and fifty. You used to get one hundred and fifty of those. Now those start to slowly go away. So if you do attacks on the peak contest every day, you get sixty of those back uh, regularly. Because it's about 30, you know, days in a month, average. So, yeah, you can actually do a lot of, uh, uh, you can probably do about a year's worth of, uh, um, uh, every, you can do, do about like, uh, uh, 12, uh, seven, uh, day splurges on that, and you can get yourself some pretty darn good re rewards, because then that means that will allow you to have big equipment that can run all these things, and I never thought I would ever get to this point. Uh, the fact that I am this far is just monumental, considering that I am not a, not a wallet warrior. Wallet warriors are people who just spend thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a year on this game, and yeah, it's ridiculous. Cannot believe I have been been playing this since uh, oh hell, uh, late twenty fifteen. Crazy, huh? And then another thing I want to tell you guys is that depending on the attributes of your commander, each one of these has different um attributes counter striker is fun because you pretty much have another level of damage to the enemy uh if they hit you but you want to make sure that you can survive that hit so just kind of depends because you can use counter striker to your advantage and that can really mess up a lot of people if you're looking for really strong defensive stuff, Rebel is probably your best one when it comes to, to defense. But if you have a really strong front row and like a really like weak back row, AI one is, is a kind of a fun one. Because I used this on Orochi for a long time until they added Rebel and, and, and Immortal number 99. And this one allows your, you to have a, a shield in the front of your soldiers. And that for a long time saved me a lot of trouble. Because when you have your health in the millions... When it comes to your soldiers or like, you know, mid hundred hundred Ks, you know, that allows you to, to just tank ungodly amounts of damage from the enemy. And if they have like a have they have like a substantial first strike attack, that can save you a lot of trouble for your front row soldiers. But yeah, the rebel I would say is your top priority when it comes to attack, and then secondary uh, de defense commander. Sorry, uh, when it comes to uh, the defense, and then a second one would be AI one, and then if you want a uh, a good attack one, I would highly recommend pioneer. And then Celebrity Star. Those are pretty fun ones because Pioneer allows you, you you to get a pretty pretty solid hit on the enemy, especially when you hit. So, yeah, that will allow you, will allow you to do uh, more attack damage. Longevity is it's a fun one, but you know your attack and, and uh, accuracy will it can increase. This cannot be cleared, and this is kind of like a permanent stat on your soldier, so it's always there. Only problem is that it doesn't really give you any benefits besides uh, attack and accuracy. So if you're looking for like a good, strong uh, defense commander that does have a lot of skills, like a lot of Gemini, Power of Scorpio, and... Uh, uh, maybe, uh, if, if they're, if they are, are using, like, uh, what do you call it, uh, hybrid soldiers, which I will show you. Hybrid soldiers are soldiers that can run skills much like the, oh, no, these. You see? These guys have, have the attributes of both walkers and, uh, uh, 
airships, walkers and airships, and finally walkers and, uh, no, sorry, airships and infantry. Then you, you can probably run Leo Power and uh, another one to gain four different attack abilities to always ensure that you will be able to attack. Uh, and you'll be able to maybe, uh, what you call it, um, have incredible defense and, you know, survivability to allow you to have that kind of nice trade-off. But um, in, in, the, in, the, in kind of in the, in the end stage of the game, you're kind of stuck to maybe Pioneer, uh, Rebel, and Immortal number 99. AI one if you don't have these ones available to you, but usually all these are available to you. But uh, you have to unlock them using uh, cores to allow you to do that. Uh, and by the way, uh, your tech, depending on, on how high it is, the, the more higher you have your tech, the stronger your skills are against the enemy's skills. And it changes depending on the disparity between you and the other player. It's not just, you know, oh, I'm this level, so therefore it's this. It depends on what level your stuff is and how much your tech is compared to the enemy tech of the other guy. If my tech is 10,346 and their tech is 5,280, I will have much better stats against them and my attacks will, and my attributes will be way better than theirs and, you know, their stuff would be way, way weaker. But if I have 10,346 and they have 15,932, then my attacks will be a lot more, uh, uh, they will be more mitigated against because, uh, they will have higher stuff than me. So it's a mixture of having a really high level uh, combat AI and your tech. You want to try to get those leveled up as quick as possible. And you can go ahead and sacrifice uh, these things that can increase uh, uh, your, uh, <clears throat> your equipment uh, levels uh, for free. Um, Using those bots, and uh, that can uh, allow you to uh, get that up quicker. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things I've been really trying to work on is get that up as quick as possible. I don't think there is an upper limit to that number, but for your in, for your uh, uh, combat AIs, I think the highest rank is one hundred. So when you get that to level one hundred, you you'll be set. Now, unless they added something new in the game, then that's going to be something different. Um, and then you also want to pay attention to these events and news because depending on what's going on in here, you can you can save up your stuff and get some really good things. But you also want to take an account to see what other events are coming your way, such as gang bounty event, because you know, because you see, I just used a lot of uh, good yum yums for this, and I used about sixty nine thousand gold. But then you also have, you know, build, you know, you also have, uh, you know, donate to the guild tech. And then you also have this one, which you increase your, uh, uh, your power. Holy balls. Did I just go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, I just want to have a couple million power by, uh, by doing that. So, yeah, as you guys can see, I did not realize I had done that. So, you know, when you train soldiers and stuff like that, like I just did, uh, you know, getting, uh, like an, probably an additional, like 60 something, you know, uh, something origins, you know, that's really, really good. And that allowed us to be able to take advantage of that goodness of that stuff. And then you see that you have other, uh, events going on. I see, uh, you get, not events, but like, uh, re -re rewards. And I'll show you a little bit more. Give me two seconds, guys. So yeah, these things can be used to increase your 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 your, your levels. Save these up. If you don't, you know, if you're not part of a big guild, you want to try to save these up if you can, or if you want to go ahead and use these to help the rest of your guild, that will also help as well. I um I used to have like like fifty million points. But I had to jump guilds, so I didn't have very much of anything. So, 
yeah, I, I'm like, like I, I, I one time killed a ins an insane amount of enemy soldiers trying to defend one of our capitals on server, and this was like, was like maybe like fifty million points, and I could just buy everything in the guild shop like a hundred times over. So you you want to try to save those up. Now, if you're part of a bigger guild that has at least a that has at least a couple capitals, then you want to go ahead and try to get those get these bad boys because you see special attributes like it's like there'll be a second column. There's normal pride, normal goods, and then there's specialty goods that will pop up underneath these, and you can go ahead and uh, grab some of those bad boys, and that will allow you to get some good stuff. Holy balls, now it's 42 minutes long. Alright, cool. And yeah, so this is kind of like a quick little crash course of... Crash course of... Figure stuff out as quickly as you can in the game and stick to it. Because you can't really ever go back. If they ever do have like a reset function on your soldier research, I will definitely be taking advantage of... I, I might be taking advantage of that. Because that will allow me to, you know... Because like you know, like let's say that, that you know that they allow you to like, to like get rid of like a couple columns worth, I would get rid of this, get rid of this, and get rid of that, and that will will, will that will, will save up, you know, an insane amount of resources that I could use for something else. Also, about in the mid hundred millions to about you know a billion, maybe. When you start getting way over here, though. That's when you start hitting the uh, the billions, and that's when it starts to hit you a lot harder than you expect. So you want to try to take advantage of the uh, <laughs> the stuff. Um, and by the way, uh, um, you want to try to save your speed ups because they do regular game updates, and that resets what your uh, resets your counter. I, I want to show you. Uh, so. Uh, there's a thing in the in the game called time help, and depending on how much time help that there there is, each member can only help uh, uh, decrease your time needed for research or soldier training or stuff like that. And uh, and uh, they can only do that once, but if the game resets because you know they did a game uh, update. That will allow that counter to be re uh, reset back down to zero, so then people can actually help you once again. And that you see how this how this just popped up. Here, I'll show you. Here, let's go to this. Let's go to this. You see a time help. I can only help these people once, and he's building rangers and hummingbirds and yetis. I help him once. That's all. All I can do. But if they're, let's say they were like trying to build origins like I did. And you know, here, let's go over, hop over here. Uh, turds. So, I was at 2208, and now we're at 2144. Sorry, no, we were at 2144, and now we're at 2208. Okay, Google. 2200 and. Eight minus two thousand one hundred and forty four. Two thousand two hundred and eight minus two thousand one hundred and forty four is sixty four. Yeah, so I trained sixty four origin. So that's really awesome because that, you know, uh that helped me grow. I lost my 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 my, my, my train of thought in the middle of all that. I apologize. So two four two one Vega and then go back to this. So two four two one four so two four two one and then yeah. And then uh you know, uh, so I have noticed that in certain scenario, uh, that in a lot of scenarios, uh, when, when I'm fighting against enemies, when I had all three of these slots completely filled with soldiers, um, 
with uh, with tier 12 my low tier soldiers in the front would be able to tank the damage and would have a lot less damage done overall to my soldiers and the value of each soldier and that would allow me to actually be able to do incredible amounts of damage to the enemy because they would not be able to break through that powerful meat wall in the front and uh i want to show you guys an example of that So you guys, you guys can see, they hit me pretty hard in that first initial attack. So, uh, yeah, um, that non-violent, uh, you know, attack can really do me a lot of damage if I'm not careful. So I need to be, so I need to be a bit more careful with that. As you can see, now I'm completely healed up, and they did absolutely nothing and since i'm running that combat ai that also helps my soldiers heal up and since i am also running here let me pull that up for you my friend buddies friends buddies chums friends buddies uh gosh look at look at these insane numbers these are just so big uh links radiance uh uh let's see uh after each uh, action, airship re resurrects 6% of mission units unaffected by unable to recover health points. So, yeah, pretty much that's a giant FU to the enemy. Then we have Resistance, we have the Scorpio, and we have this one. Sculptor's Radiance, have a 20% trigger. The next action is taken. All oh, the soldiers in the front row enter the spotless armor state, reducing damage taken by 20%. That's pretty much an additional 20% total damage reduction. Attacking units with spotless armor will remove all buffs on the attacker. So that is a massive help for us because that's pretty much another giant FU to the enemy. Then we have the total damage reduction addition to that. So we we're, we have like 60-70% total damage reduction. And that, that's pretty darn impressive if you ask me. Like so we have the regular total damage reduction 55%. And then you have the additional 55%. And then you have 65%. And then you have, uh, then you, uh, go away. And then you have, if you want to run, you know, Aegis, you know, you can get 75%. Or what I do is I run, uh, Dominion. No. I can run Lucifer, because that will give me a massive boost on my health points and 5% total damage reduction. But the skills trigger rate is the most important thing when it comes to uh, to Orochi. Because he needs to make sure to have Menderbot and Corrosive Armor as active as absolute possible. Since we do not have Hercules Protection's uh, you know, uh, ability. Hercules Protection is also another type of Corrosive Armor. But it's just a different type of attack. But yeah so and then we have mender bond so we have three separate skills that help heal our soldiers and you guys can, can kind of see why this is such an effective build and kind of makes orochi really hard to hard to defeat he wins most of his battles so you know here let me see if he uh, no go away But yeah, so uh, yeah, when uh, when you are fighting things like that, you know, uh, you can kind of see just why why that is so effective. So um, you know, uh, when 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 you start doing the research on why different attributes and different things work for your commanders, you can sometimes find weird little niches in the game that you can exploit. Like I told you, my Vega. Mo a lot of people don't use Vega. They prefer uh, Dragon Slayer. The problem is that Dragon Slayer needs high penetration at the cost of a lot of attack and critical because she doesn't have breakdown. 
breakdown removes 120% defense buffs. That's pretty much 120% penetration right there. And then if you run Form Halt, uh, Form Halt pretty much makes it so that on our, on our first attack, uh, 10%, um, let's see, yeah, sorry, 10% of attack damage is not affected by damage reduction effects. That also means uh, Broken Fortress is, is uh, negated, which means even if the enemy has like even 120%, you know, uh, total, like total damage reduction, which is virtually impossible, uh, it would still do 10% of our 10% damage, kind of reset, resetting them back down in 90% total damage reduction. So, unless you have all level 50 armor and all attributes and stats stacked, you're, you'd still have to receive damage, which is why Vega running, uh, this at almost level 30. That's almost, you know, that would be, you know, uh, that, that if we get this to level 30, that'd be 30 right there for the, uh, shockwave. And then that we would also be running, uh, this. And I'll show you, uh, this one right here. You see, this is maxed out. This is called Power of Airships. When other types of airships are present, deals 30% attack damage to all enemies if target is hit in the first round. So, if our Vega activates uh, Breakdown or Scorpio or Light of Gemini, uh, he, his uh, Power of Airships and if his Shockwave triggers, that would be 60% total damage of everything that we have run for our vega which is all based on attack and some accuracy and no it, it's all attack and some critical if uh, if um if you get all that attack to hit we can do catastrophic damage i call this the nuclear strike commander because if you if you get you know the right kind of attacks done by this guy he will decimate enemy forces no matter how much defense damage reduction health points they have that level of attack will weigh uh, e um, even if we don't kill the enemy commander the damage that we, we will do to those soldiers would be astronomical so that is one of the things that i run with vega because that allows him to be extremely effective at the cost of an, an attack helmet so even though he he uh, doesn't have tang lang anymore which is penetration he has um that uh Form halt, which will allow him to be able to hit really, really hard, and he's also running Pioneer, and Pioneer is probably going to be the one that I'm going after next once we get uh, Rebel to uh, complete uh, 100%. So yeah, you guys can can I kind of see why I run my commanders the way I do because it's kind of finding little little niches in the game that you can kind of wiggle yourself into and I've taken people by surprise because they're like oh this is a Vega he's not going to do much and suddenly they get hit by hit by like a nuclear strike and there's like oh my gosh where did all my soldiers go and it's like he 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 you got it and then you know Sister Wolf is not too effective right now Sister Wolf is a lot more effective if you run her with time walkers on on the front and then uh 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 void skaters in the back she uh, you're pretty much running a defense form on her even though she's an attack commander because for orochi and Ve and uh rogers they have their front soldiers which can heal and take a lot more punishment and then you and heal themselves and then you have the back soldiers which are the damage dealers based off health points same thing with sister wolf so she is also running that kind of stuff and that helps you know so if we can go ahead and get time walkers for her, then she will be a lot more effective on the battlefield, being able to fight against other commanders and being able to get her soldiers back up and running. She has no health points. She has very little health point stuff built into her stuff. So she, she's running Leo Power, Light of and Light of Gemini, and Scorpio. Because uh uh yeah, because Leo Power of Scorpio and Live Gemini, like I told you guys earlier in the video, those can actually take advantage of our soldiers that run this.
And these are known as advanced airships. And uh, advanced airship research is still going underway. But, uh, you know, even though these guys don't have as much uh, benefits, they are still under the airship level, um, the, the airship type of, uh, um, the airship type of, uh, uh, buffs. So even though we're putting all our stuff into airships, we can transfer that the, the airship buffs into sis, into Sister Wolf and kind of give her stronger soldiers to work with, even if they aren't tier twelve. So this is kind of a good uh, good midway point to kind of compensate for her weakness, making her stronger because of those attributes and uh, traits. So. You know, even even if we only have one slot of uh, of void skaters, we can still run those uh, run those uh, airships, and that will allow her to still be effective, even if even when she's fighting against other commanders. And a lot of people run smaller commanders in galactic battle or uh Kassatan or even server battles. So if you run her right, you can actually destroy a lot of enemy commanders. But you have to be careful or else you're going to lose a lot of your soldiers since she doesn't really have much survivability under her belt. But if you know how to run her right and then jump away uh, from the enemy attack before another commander can, can drop you, then that will allow her strength to be, uh, to be a hit and run commander. You know, you have to, uh, you know, sacrifice about 10 to, 10 to 15k gold jumping to and fro or if you're in a small arena like the uh like the uh um like Lata campaign what you can do is click on your arc and then hit jump and then you can go hit go ahead and hit confirm and you'll be jumped to a random part of the 30 by 30 map i think it's like 30 by 30 by 30 by 30 kind of like map so yeah um I guess it's technically 60 by 60. But yeah, so uh, you can actually, uh, you know, do that, which is pretty freaking awesome. So that way, you know, I, I, here, I, I want to show you something. You know, I, I want to show you a, an interesting thing that I have before I end the video. Um... I'm listening to uh, to jazz and I, dude, I freaking love jazz. Jazz is is the, is the best. Where in the flying butt pickles are my random jumpy jumps? Where are my jumperoni jumpertons? Where? Where? Oh, I love this song. <laughs> Time after time. There we are. I have 770 random warps. I could jump an F-ton around a map and mess up any enemy commanders with my sister wolf. And she would still be able to mess up, you know, tons of Rian Hardens and other defense commanders. Oh, check this out, guys. So you see, he does not receive any damage from me, which is a problem. Because I think he was actually running a, a broken fortress. As you can see, when he's attacking me, but he's not, you know, doing too much. Oh wait, I, I think I, I think I think I know what he's running. I think I know what he's running. But as you can, you can see, this is one of the reasons why you run your your small soldiers in the front, because they can take that damage. So when this guy is trying to attack me, and he's trying to do all this amount of damage, but he can't do much of anything. And then you have my big soldiers in the back going, uh, screw you. And as you can see, I lost only 41,910 Hinds, but he lost 650 Rias. So, you can see how, how scary that is. And then look at this. 4,796 instead of, you know, and he lost 550. 
He has rank. You know, he has level one, and I have level eighty-four. And as you guys can see, my uh, uh, yeah, you see what he's trying to do. He changed one of his soldiers out to see if that would work out. But unfortunately, that soldier is more susceptible to being hit. Oh, whoops, I didn't attack that. Whoops, say me, I'm dumb. I assure you I'm a smart individual, guys. But yeah, so I don't really have much accuracy on Orochi. He just kind of needs to, uh, what you call it, uh, outlast the enemy. And as you can see, that kind of allowed him to be able to, uh, hold his ground. They lost 550 Reyes, I lost 38,174 Hinds. So, yeah, it starts to even out on the, on the amount of damage that we have done to each other. But the thing is that my, my, my main soldiers are being protected. And those small soldiers can very easily be healed. Since those ones don't require as much resources, time, or effort to heal or build. And you can see um, kind of the same things that are going on. So we have Alcade. Oh, he's not running broken, broken Fortress. Okay, I thought he was. My bad, guys. Yeah, so he's running Alcades and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, he has some, like, strong stuff. But, uh, yeah, um, he does not have level, much level 40. So his uh, commander is unfortunately very underpowered when it comes to this fight. Now, if he had all level 50 equipment, that might be a different story. But, yeah, it's, uh... Pretty, pretty strong defense that my Orochi has. Even against commanders with uh, with uh, Wings of Eternity or things like that, you know, when you have that going, you know, uh, when you have that strong defense, you know, that can really save you a lot of trouble. So, you know, if you keep investing in your commander and getting better and better stuff on him, you can really start to see, you know, the high amount of, uh, you know, uh, stuff that you do. They can put on your... Oh, dude, Synthesizer Jazz is the best. I freaking love Synthesizer Jazz. That takes me back to, like, the 90s. Like, 90s, early 2000s, when, like, you know, technology was really starting to kick off. Wow. Anyway, um... But, yeah, all maxed out, all ready to go. So, you know, like I said, when you feed, you know, a lot of your stuff into that one commander... You know, that uh, just goes to show just how effective that commander really can be. So you really want, 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 want to work on trying to build that commander up. Because when you, when you do that, um, that, will, 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 that will come back to help you. So you really don't ever want to neglect your commanders. Now, all of these commanders can be useful in their own ways. And they can be effective in, in some aspects, and you can use different plugin skills to make a, a somewhat a non viable commander, uh, I'm sorry, non effective commander effective again. Sister Wolf without, um, without steam cannon or other attributes would be seen as not very useful but if she runs steam cannon you can use her against defense commanders because that wipes out a lot of their attributes and buffs and that messes them up and then you know so yeah all these different commanders all these different little things you know they can be useful elf is a really really strong commander she is a very powerful, um, uh, walker commander. She has curse, you know, blessing, and all those other things. So, you know, if you really want to use her, I could probably use her with my, uh, with my, um, uh, airships. Because the airships have their attributes, which allows them to be really, really effective. So, you know, the airships would be super, super strong, and they will, will, will be running off of a uh, an, an elf. And that could actually allow her certain attributes to be used. So you can actually use your buffed up soldiers on different commanders. Even if you don't have any, you know, infantry or uh, walker research done. 
if you just run them off of, off of the right commander with the right with the right equipment, you can make that commander absolutely devastating. And you know that's kind of what I'm thinking about maybe doing. You know, maybe running a Walker commander with my uh, with my uh, tier tier ten airships because you know that could probably you know make make them re re effective. And then you know um, for Stella, you know. People run Stella builds, and uh, Stella has her weird skill. Uh, she here we are. Stella has Dizzy, which makes it so that way. Uh, until the next a action, all enemy accuracy and attack are decreased by one percent. And then she has the Wings of Eternity. Come on, you dumb turd. Uh, you know. After this attack ends, the activator's troops have an additional action. If so, then damage of the second attack is 1.5%. So if you get that, you know, you get you know, that, that damage, you know, pretty darn high. Like maybe like 60%, which is not too shabby if you ask me. Well, maybe 45%. But still, you know. And then you, then you, um, you could literally run, you know, your, uh, you could run a, a one slot, uh, sorry, you could run tons of tier 11, inf uh, tier 11, uh, airships, which are now buffed a, a, buffed as absolute hell for your commanders and stuff like that, because, uh, you know, your, uh, your, uh, commander, you know, even though it's an, it's an infantry commander, you're running your airships, and your airships will be able to have all these different attributes of these different commanders. Even though they are not tier 12, they could still be just devastating to the enemy. And if you get the right kind of uh, Wings of Eternity uh, um, uh, buff with the right kind of uh, um, skills trigger rate increase, you could turn Stella into one of the most devastating re- uh, you know, uh, attacking soldiers ever. And if you run her with a Vega type build, and then you run, you know, uh, um, instead of pants, you run, uh, you know, the, uh, these bad boys right here, the red spear with skills trigger rate. And then you, uh, you want to keep this though, because that will allow you to do more damage. But, you know, you can also run that. That's an additional 20%. And then, you know, there's different weapons and p pieces of equipment that can give you more skills trigger rate. You get that to 100% or even 95%, you are guaranteed to do a lot of damage to the enemy. So it just kind of depends on how you want to run your soldiers. Just be smart. Read over the commanders. See what the skills are. See what the... Uh, well, what these are, you know, see what, 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 you, what the things that you can buy here, you know. I think I have, like, five or six of these, so I don't need to worry about that. But, yeah, like, uh, yeah, you know, you can see all these beautiful different things that you can run. And, uh, yeah, um, if you get these right, you'll be able to, uh, to get some really awesome setups that can really uh you know play into, into the mechanics of the game and turn you into a very effective and very surprising individual on the battlefield that's the thing that you're trying to go for is that you're trying to take the enemy by surprise and that's one one of the reasons why uh why my vega is so terrifying because you know, people don't expect him to be effective, and yet he can hit with the force of a freaking nuke. And the more leadership I add into him, and the more uh, tier 12 uh, IC 1848s I add into him, the more he's going to be able to do a lot more damage to mess up the enemy. And, you know, I, 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 wanted, I want to run the, the Ether Djinn on him, because that has more base attack and more buffs for their attack. But unfortunately, they do not have... That special accuracy bonus, which is a huge problem. So, but these guys, you know, these guys have that huge accuracy bonus. So for my Vega, I need a 100% assurance that my soldiers are going to hit. Or else I'm going to lose that slot of soldiers and that's going to hurt me a lot. So if I can get that initial first hit into the enemy, into the enemy area... 
I can do a lot of damage to them and cause that commander to either be killed or do a lot of widespread damage, even if I am defeated. And if I defeat that first slot of the enemy and do widespread damage to the rest of the enemy, then when they hit my commander, my soldiers are still alive, even though my commander is injured. And I can heal my commander for like 200 gold. But yeah, so uh, yeah, you guys can see that... Uh, you know, you kind of have to, to do trade-offs. It depends. You know, I have to trade off on the better attack of my Ether de Gens for the better accuracy of my AC, IC 1848s. And, you know, as time goes on, I'm thinking about maybe trying out the Mirage. But that's the thing. I don't really care about those other two airships because those are not my attack style. Uh, you'll see a lot of people playing black. Uh, the commander called Black. He's a very strong attack uh, commander for the uh, um, airships, and they run mirages because he, uh, depending on his attacks, are 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 based on the uh, defense. And I think, if I remember right, uh, um. Uh, the Mirage's attack is based on how much defense your commander and your stats have. So, if I remember right, so if you have wicked high defense and an ungodly amount of defense, I mean, you know, and you hit, you're going to do a remarkable amount of damage and you're going to completely nuke the enemy slot. What I am trying to do is see if I can slowly get myself up to Void Skater and then Time Walker. Because that will allow me to have a secondary uh, defense uh, run. And I want to try to do that with Elf or Sister Wolf. Because Sister Wolf is more attack, more centered around attack. But if we, we can run that kind of a, you know, style on her, that will actually allow her to be more effective. But unfortunately, I think I might have to switch to over to Elf. Because, uh, yeah, um... Let me take a look. I think a couple of these people are should be running elf or close to it. Let's see. Let's see if we can go ahead and find her. Um. Oh, look at that! Somebody's actually running golem. There you go. Wow, that's surprising. Somebody's actually running golem. You know, a high level player is running running golem. You see, that's another thing that you run unexpectedly. Some people are running that, and it's like. What the heck? How the heck are you running that guy? Oh, here we are, Elf. See? So, you know, what I might do is try to get myself a massive uh, defense commander uh, for... Uh, 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 for, uh, you know, uh, walkers. And that might allow me another level of defense of nearly unstoppable power for, you know, my, my, my ship. Because I am a great wall commander. I'm, I'm able to just like set myself up on a defense and just cut out the enemy and just take down, you know, like 20 or 30 enemies before I sustain, you know, substantial damage. So uh, the enemy has to either risk sending a massive fleet to attack me or they're going to keep losing soldiers and soldiers and soldiers. So it's either all or nothing. It's not this in between. So that's kind of the same thing with uh, with uh, Elf. She is really freaking strong. Yeah, that didn't really work too well. Oh, there you go. That was pretty nasty. Bam. You see? That shockwave is devastating. So you guys can, you guys can, can still kind of see, even though he doesn't have much health points, he has a lot of attack. Yeah, she's running, uh... Uh, that's frustrating. But we still killed her. That's what counts. 
I'm actually quite shocked. Our Vega handled that really, really well. So if you run the right kind of, uh, you know, slots with your uh, with your Vega, you can do some really nasty damage. That's kind of one of the reasons why I do this staggered design because that assures that you know Vega gets to, you know, use the attributes of both of these airships. However. Uh, what I might try to do is, you know, alternate these slots again, where it's IC 1848 first, but that's just kind of, kind of my thought. Wait, I, I, did I actually do that? Give me a second. Which one of my commandos attacks first? Oh, never mind. See? Yeah, so you, you are definitely assured for that, uh, you know, initial attack, and then you get to take advantage of the, uh, of the, uh, Ether Dijins in the middle of those slots. So, yeah, you can actually run Vega full slotted, but that puts you at the risk of losing a lot of your soldiers. And so you want to, you know, make sure that you weigh the costs and the uh, risk because you can do insane amounts of damage to the enemy, but at what risk? So, you know, I, like I said, last Kassatan, I lost like 8,000 of my, uh, um, uh, of my, uh, uh, of these guys. Well, not 8,000, but I think 7,300, which is just an insane amount. Like, it's a horrible, horrible amount. Like, I lost so much. So, um, that's why you want to keep track of that, because it's going to take me about a year to get these out of the, uh, out of the shelter. Unless, you know, God blesses me with an insane amount of, uh, you know, um, an insane amount of, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, uh, um, uh, crystals, you know, uh, I'm gonna be kinda effed. So, uh, Sorry, meta crystals. So unless God blesses me with with a with a with like a couple like a like about like three billion, four billions worth of uh of meta crystals, we ain't gonna gonna get very far. So uh yeah, me kinda healing my soldiers back up is gonna take a long time. But in turn that will give me, oh gosh, I am so sorry. That that will give me time to, you know, uh, build up my other soldiers. So, you know, that will allow me to be able to uh, take advantage of that and uh, have those four extras. And, and, you know, even if I have too much Origins, I can, I can just go ahead and repurpose those bad boys into my, uh, my, my, my coveted Cyan Shuttles. Because, look, if I repurpose all every single one of my Origins, I can get, like, an additional 1,100, um, it has 1,100, uh, uh, orange, I mean, I mean, cyan shuttles. So, yeah, I would need an, an insane amount of, uh, um, unlimited crystals and, like, almost 20 billion gas, which is a remarkable number. You know, that means my entire front row of cyan shuttles would be accomplished so you know if you really want to like like build up a surplus of soldiers that you can you know work with go with the origin or whatever soldier type of like a soldier type of like uh the quote tier 12 and then tier 12.2 like you know 12.2 or sorry 12 uh 2.0 or we call them maybe tier 13, even though they are still technically tier 12. You know, we, we call them tier 13 since they are technically a another jump ahead. So um, you can uh, repurpose these into uh, cyan shuttles and, uh, you know, you get yourself set. Or you can repurpose your cyan shuttles into this. If you have, like, a couple million uh, unlimited crystals and you have, like... A couple hundred billion uh, 
uh, gas. You can afford to go jump back and forth and use this ability to get yourself a lot of really good soldiers and boost yourself back up. But uh, that's going to cost you insane amounts of money. So you're not going to be able to really take, uh, take advantage of that. So if you save up for a couple years in the game and you have that amount of stuff, that's awesome. And that will allow you to, allow you to take advantage of that unless they switch the, the uh, dynamics of the game. But yeah, that's the other things that you can do. So you can take advantage of that and be able to swap out your soldiers and get some good yum yums. So yeah, um, even if you lose all your soldiers, like, like I did, just keep building them up. And then once you eventually get more soldiers, just repurpose them because you get a few more back and uh, you'll have, have more and more soldiers to fill out the rest of your stuff. So it'll all work out in the end. It's just going to take a long time to heal your soldiers. Anyway, this is almost an hour and a half video. Holy balls. I have not done a long video in like almost a year. So I need to go ahead and uh, jump off and try to get some sleep. I am... Yeah, but anyway, I hope that this video has been informative and kind of giving you guys some ideas and insight on how to run the game for any newcomers and stuff like that. So, yeah, you guys saw at the beginning of the video something I accomplished, and now we're just going to be, we're going to be working on the rest. Anyway, uh, this has been Sabin Dimitrov, a.k.a. Denzville the Astro Wolf, and it has been an absolute pleasure having you guys here for this video. I greatly look forward to seeing you guys on the next one, and uh, yeah, always remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, because when you guys like, that will push my videos up on the algorithm, and you know, give my videos more, uh, ex uh, um, uh, what's that term? Uh, it starts with an E, uh, exposure. And, uh, you know, when, when you share my videos, that gives them also more exposure and the algorithm continues to work into that because it's like, hey, this, this video has been shared a lot. People should watch it. And then, you know, when you guys subscribe, you know, you guys become part of the wolf pack. You know, you guys are not just subscribers. You guys are part of the wolf pack. And because of this amazing wolf pack that continues to grow, we all can grow together and that will help the channel and, you know, me and us all become successful. And I'm hoping to maybe eventually open up a store so you guys Guys can enjoy some really fun old things. Maybe, maybe, maybe e e even sell some plushies. I think that would be really fun to sell plushies. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then you, when you guys hit that notification bell, and if you guys can, please do make sure to hit all. That will allow my uh, allow the no notifications to hit your uh, email or your app notifications or whatever, and you guys can be uh, notified when I upload new content. I'm trying to upload some AI content as well because that is trending, and I want to try to bring my characters alive. And you know that's actually kind of cool with how well this has gone so far. So. Yeah, you guys can see some of the most recent stuff I'm working on. You guys can see that I've made songs using AI about my home country or the Astral Empire. So it's kind of fun being able to bring those alive. So I really do hope that you guys enjoy those as well. What is this? Oh, man. Imperial Invasion sucks poo-poos. It's so dumb. I hate it. Anyway, um... And then, uh, yeah, I, I try to participate in Imperial Invasion because I'll give you 30, uh, uh, 30 of these uh, little thingies here. Oh, by the way, uh, hit these three times a day. One, two, three. 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 And then that will allow you to get a few more points so that we can level up your uh, combat AI a little bit quicker. Ugh. I swear, if they add another AI that um, is better for my Orochi... I'm going to lose my mind because like you have to like reset your AI and it's going to take you like an hour and a half of just mashing that button with an auto clicker to get that commander all the way back up and running. It's so stupid. Uh, sorry. So what you want to do is set up the auto clicker for every, you know, half second or so. And, uh, Watch a uh, watch a YouTube series or a documentary because you're going to be sitting there for a long time.
And uh, yeah, you know, I like a notification bell. And uh, yeah, you know, I greatly look forward to before being able to see you guys on the next video. And uh, yeah, it's very nice being able to finally do a, another fun Ark of War video, you know. I haven't really done one in a few months, so it kind of feels good to be able to do one again. You know, if you guys have questions or want me to cover a topic on a uh, Ark of War video, please, you know, you know, feel free to let me know. I'd be happy to do a video on it. I'm trying to keep up content so that way you guys don't go, don't grow bored of the uh, wolf pack. But uh, yeah, you know, um, I want to make sure I release quality content. So that's why I sometimes space out my videos because it's just like. You know, I don't want you guys to just have cheap garbage to watch. I want you guys to have stuff that's valuable. So, I'm sorry if I, you know, have a very irregular schedule, you know. But I just want my videos to be effective and, you know, to come out well. And, you know, I have almost like, I have almost 800 videos on, on the uh, channel, which is astronomical. And, uh, you know, I plan to make new, uh, new 2025 playlists. So hopefully from this point on, uh, and once 2025 hits, you know, I can do 2025 unboxing videos and onward, 2025 this, blah, 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 blah. So that way you guys can, 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 uh, can keep along on my, on my playlist and fun little things like that. I think that would be very, very fun. And, uh, yeah. It's so it's so fun being able to, you know, have this channel. This channel started off as my personal channel, and it still kind of is. But you know, now I have uh, now I have a reason to keep it going, and it's very very fun. So please, you know, share the channel around. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to ask you guys is uh, if you guys want to send donations or you know become a uh, a partner of the channel, please, you know. Uh, consider joining the, the, the memberships because uh, that will be able to help me gain, you know, revenue and help me to be, deal with not only my bills, but hopefully, you know, uh, keep the channel going and that will show you guys wonderful support for the channel. So please feel free to, you know, join the memberships. I'd, I would be honored if you guys would. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you guys will gain more exclusive perks. You guys could, you know, uh, talk to me one-on-one -on -one and we can do like a little, little, uh, live stream conversation between the other two. Keep politics and social things out of the, uh, conversation though. We're not going to be talking about world events or politics or drama stuff or things like that. We're going to be talking about hobbies and fun little things like that and things that don't require, uh, touchy topics. So, uh, yeah, you know. But, uh, yeah, you know, we can have, like, fun little one-on-one -on -one conversations. We can do all sorts of these fun little things. And we can just talk about fun things that we're doing. You know, our heritage. You know, uh, fun things that we're working on. What we like to watch. What we like to eat. All sorts of really fun little things to help, you know, show the diversity of the wolf pack. But anyway, guys, uh, this has been Sabin Dimitrov, a.k.a. A Dance for the Asked Wolf. Been a pleasure having you guys for this, for, here for this video. I greatly look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. You guys stay awesome. And always remember... God bless.